top of the hour, seven o'clock, and we are so excited that you all have joined us for Do Re Mi, possibly the most clever PD name that we have ever come up with, uh, and it's all down here from here. No, <laughs> um, I, I see a lot of familiar faces out there. I'm Kathleen Staten, the manager of Music Constructed, and I am thrilled tonight to be hosting three experts in the field who are here to help you navigate the sometimes confusing world of funding for your music classroom. And those amazing guests include Jessica Palmer, the Director of National Sales for West Music, Randy Hargis, a National Sales Consultant for West Music, and Ashley Lohr, a music educator and author. She'll tell you more about her grant uh, book and the work that she's done uh, as she helps you to navigate terminology and funding sources. Um, we're thrilled to have you here tonight. Just a quick order of business. Um, you're welcome to unmute and ask questions, put your video on or interact with us in chat. We'll be happy to take your questions at the end of the session. And as always, we will send out a copy of this video as well as the any supplementary materials, links and everything like that. So you don't have to worry about copying and clicking this evening. So without further delay, I'm thrilled to hand the floor over to Jessica Palmer. All right. Thank you so much, Kathleen. Uh, like she said, I am uh, the director of national sales at West Music. I've been with West for just about three years now in um, a couple different positions. And um, something we find when we're working with teachers is terminology can be very confusing when it comes to quotes, purchase orders, invoices, requisitions. Um, so we're going to kick off our presentation tonight with just a little terminology lesson for you. So starting off with helpful terms to know when you are doing your purchasing. A quote is a document that gives fixed pricing for items. So at West Music, this is a promise to you that we are maintaining any special pricing for a set amount of time, usually 30 days, but it can be longer depending on your needs. That means even if there's price changes, if um, you know, you're know you buying a bunch of Tubanos and Remo decides to raise their prices, we're going to freeze that quoted price for you through the duration of that quote. This is a, a quote is a great tool to bring to your admin as you're preparing to do some purchasing for your classroom. Um, and it's something that our associates at West Music can help you with. And I'll let Randy talk a little bit more about that later. So a quote is a great place to start. A requisition is something that some schools use as a request for products or services made by an employee to a purchasing department. Not every school uses a requisition form, but if your school does, it's likely something that you uh, that is put together to give to your purchasing department so that they can create a purchase order. Note, a requisition is not a purchase order. Um, if you send a requisition to West Music, there's not a whole lot we can do about it until we get a purchase order. So we've got a quote to start. A requisition is something you may or may not use in your school district. And let's move forward to a purchase order. A purchase order is a document from a buyer to commit to pay for products or services. So this is what gets sent to us here at West or to anyone else you're purchasing from to place an order. And this is a promise from the buyer to pay for anything that has been sent to them. Um, this is not the only way you can purchase items. Some schools will use uh, credit cards or um, other or checks things like that, but this is a, a really frequent way that schools and school districts pay for orders. Um, they are filled as soon as we get them and um, things will start shipping to your door as soon as they arrive in our warehouse. After the purchase order is sent, the order is filled, the last piece of paper that you're gonna receive is an invoice. And an invoice is a request from the seller to the buyer to pay for the goods or services purchased. Um, at West Music, this is sent along with your delivered products. And I think that's how a lot of um, other purchasing entities do that. Um, we can bill to your individual school or to your district. 
It just depends on who is paying. And if you're not sure who is paying, then ask, who is paying for this order? Is it my school or is it my district? The last important piece to know is shipping to versus billing to locations. In most instances, the products that you're purchasing are going to ship directly to the school or the folks that are using those products. And the invoice is typically going to go to a district office. Now, this is not always the case, and it's always best to ask when you are working with uh, these documents, who is going to pay the invoice? That will tell us where to send it to. So when you're on the phone with a, mess, a West Music employee and they ask, um, are we billing to the school or to the district? This is the information we're trying to get at. Where are we sending the cool instruments that you can play and who's gonna pay the bill? So those are the terms that you need to know as you are working either with us at West Music or with anyone else you might be purchasing from. And with that, I am going to pass it off to Miss Ashley Lore to tell us some more. All right, so let's talk about the dough part, which is basically how are we getting the money to fund all of these wonderful things for our classrooms, for ourselves? Kelly has the book. Um, I'm the author of the Music Educator's Guide to Grant Writing. Thanks, Kelly, for representing. Um, and within this book, I, I have plenty more tips and tricks, but I'm just going to share just a few things that might help get your mind going when it comes to what you can do to go after some funding, um, especially if your school budget is very, very limited, and um, just some other ways that you can go about helping to ensure that you can actually get to that, you know, invoice part, which is the fun part towards the end of this whole purchasing scenario. Um, so if you want to switch over to the next slide, uh, the one of the main things when I talk with people is a, um, when it comes to trying to get these funding sources, um, it, whether they choose to do some grant writing or to make a plea some other way in order to get that funding into their classroom, um, the biggest thing to keep in mind is this: the grant writing in general or asking for these funds shouldn't be a mystery. It, it, you really want to think about it as a skill that you are working on, a skill that you are developing. So if you are writing uh, proposals to get grants. It's a writing, it's a skill that you work on over time um, and get better over time when you revise and share with people and that sort of thing. And if you're asking people for funding, keeping in mind that you're not just wanting to do the one ask and you're done. In the world of business, people continually make those asks and they keep trying to work together and to collaborate together. And if you continually ask your community, you continually ask other places, it's possible that you will eventually get some of those um, funding needs met in that way as well. Um, and so again, when it comes to working on this new skill, think about the process, the, the things that it takes to learn a new skill, things that we do as educators in our classroom every day. We give some basic information. We just learned about quotes and invoices and requisitions and all of those wonderful things. Well, you learn that basic vocabulary and you learn some of these basic terminologies and then you start to learn more about what it takes to get to that point. So you delve deeper, you make mistakes as you're going through these things, whether writing or or making requests and oh you thought the um, purchase order was going to be the only thing that you needed to worry about and oh by the way there are these other things you need to worry about too so you learn from those things um, and then when it comes to funding if you are not awarded funding not giving up just continually going for it which it can be easy to want to give up if you're not awarded funding or if your project isn't fully funded or whatever the case may be um, but that's the point at which you want to keep going because if you stop, there's no moving forward. Um, and so on the next slide, uh, when it comes to seeking out this funding, you can really kind of, um, when it in for the classroom for education in general, you can really kind of put it into two different categories, items or experiences. So items that you might be looking for in your classroom include music and scores, subscriptions to different things such as a music play for example, or lighting for your classroom or for performances. Um, 
items for students, consumables such as programs, things that you're going to use one and done, are non-consumables such as costumes, and then of course things that students can potentially take with them. So those are items for students only. But then you also might be looking for items for yourself, technology, curriculum or books, general supplies, instruments for yourself. Um, and so those are all things that you might be searching for, those tangible items. But then on the flip side, you can get grants, you can get funding for experiences for students or experiences for yourself. So for students, you have field trip admission costs that you could get covered with grants or with funding um, requests. Uh, you could get festival costs covered, guest artists, and busing, which is always shocking to me whenever I get that bill for buses, like how expensive it is to to you get on a bus um, to take you to this experience. And then of course experiences for you, you can get professional development funded, classes, certification courses funded, trip costs funded, all of those fun things with um, grants and other ways about getting these funding sources. Next slide. So as you're starting to think about these different things that you might use for your um, funding, um, I highly suggest that you put out a wish list or um, make a wish list for yourself to help you prioritize the different things that you might want or need. Um, the reason for that is if you want a lot of stuff, I get that, I've been there, I am still there a lot of the time, having that list will help you be able to focus on those things that you really, really want, you want to prioritize, you want those number one items that you can focus on getting first and then um, kind of shift some things around. So narrow that focus that will help you prioritize and you could create a Google Sheet or you could share out this list in other ways. So what I've done in the past is I've shared my Google Sheet with other people in my school community to say, hey, these are the things that we're looking for in our classroom, but there's also Sign Up Geniuses that you can use to help get those items um, without doing really honestly a lot of work for it. It's just making that ask. Um, Donors Choose is a very, very popular thing that people use that can be huge, especially when it comes to getting those items into your classroom. Um, and sharing it out, sharing these lists and different things on Facebook or with your school newsletter or just all of these other places, um, it will help people see what you want, what you need, but it will also help give them an idea of how much these things actually cost. People truly don't understand that xylophones are not like a $50 thing. And so you're also educating your community when you're sharing these lists out with people to say, hey, no, actually, uh, a good xylophone, I'm looking at this one and it's $600. So that this is why we need help with this funding big time. And then on to the next slide. Um, so again, we started talking about some of those basic vocabulary terms at the beginning. Jessica shared some with us when it comes to purchasing and ordering. Um, and the same thing is true when it comes to grant writing or making funding requests. If you're looking for um, grants specifically, knowing some organizational terms such as 501c3, indicating that a place is a nonprofit organization can be helpful. And if you happen upon terms that you don't understand, Google them and you should be able to figure them out that way. Um, there are three main types of grants. So as you're looking at them, uh, there's a one-time award, which it usually is like a one and done sort of thing, which are nice. They're usually a little bit bigger, but they're tougher to get. But if you can find some grants or other funding sources that you can tap into year after year, like a revolving deadline, a revolving door, a revolving deadline type grant, then you'll be able to potentially hopefully tap into that year after year to help enlist some of those funds for your classroom. And then rolling deadline grants tend to constantly be open and um, available for people to take advantage of. And even if one grant cycle ends, another one will begin right away. Um, and I call those the bread and butter grants because, you know, the rolling uh, rolls. I like my carbs, but also they they are they're very they can be very beneficial for your classroom. Um, and then there are other miscellaneous terms that pop up, especially when you're looking at grant uh, RFPs, which is a request for a proposal. The organization is asking you to make a proposal for them to give them or for them to give you money. Why is it that you want that money? Um, so just knowing some miscellaneous terms will be helpful. 
Um, and then there are some preliminary steps to keep in mind as you're seeking out this funding. Definitely deciding what you want or need. We just talked about the wish list. That's extremely helpful. Um, but narrowing it down, knowing the cost, knowing the source where you're getting it from, um, those are all ways that you are going to be better prepared if and when this funding comes through. Um, also inform people in your community that you're interested in funding these different things. Talk with your administrator, see if there are certain hoops you need to jump through. Talk with your business office, make sure the business office is aware that you know it's possible someone might send a check to your school, but they might not be clear on where it should go, if it should be deposited into your account or someone else's account. So make sure the business office is aware of what's going on as well. Speak with your colleagues so that they know that you're doing these things. They might have some suggestions or they might even know someone who knows someone who might be looking to help fund something within your classroom. Um, colleagues can surprise you with their connections and, and other helpful hints and ideas um, that they can put through. Talk with your students. That's another fun thing that I love to do is to ask my students, what do you think we should get in our classroom? And most of the time it's more drums. And it's like, okay, but why? And so then we um, can really collaborate together as a community. They can be in on it. You can get great quotes from them to use when you're advertising that you need this funding, either in those grants, uh, the grant proposals, or just with your community in general. And of course, speaking with parents. Uh, one time I, I literally was just talking with a grandparent one day and she was like, hey, have you heard about this foundation that gives out money? And I was like, no, I don't, I don't know about that foundation. And she said, okay, well, I'm on the board for that foundation. Let me help you here. And then we got $3,000 for xylophones. So you truly never know what you're going to unearth unless you have these, uh, you build this community and you build this um, collaboration with people. And of course, researching, like I said before, researching those things for your wish list, making sure that um, you don't do these things at the last minute. If you have a half hour at night, instead of sitting there watching YouTube or a TV show, maybe do some Googling and see what you can unearth as you go. And then on to the next slide. So um, as you're researching funding sources, I a lot of people want there to be like the, oh, what's the, the source that I can use or whatever, and every situation is different. So when you're looking for yourself and what's going to fit your classroom or your needs best, make sure that you are using the internet. You can use those blogs. You can search social media. There's a search icon on Facebook, for example, search grant or music grant, music funding. Um, look through newsletters, look at direct sites for different organizations that you um, might go to every other day, like Target, I don't know. <laughs> so th there are a lot of places where you can start to look to find th this potential funding. Again, like I said, talk with colleagues or other local businesses who might be willing to help out and save information as you go. Even if you find something that might not work for what you need right now, it's possible in a year or two or five, you might be able to tap into that funding in another way. Um, so I have a couple uh, things here, and these are actually links that we'll share out with you, um, just of some examples of some funding sources. But look at the Fortune 500 companies. There, That's a great place to start to look at which of these Fortune 500 companies might offer funding for education for educational-based purposes. And if there are any in your area, they might be really willing to help out your organization. Um, look to the National Endowment for the Arts. They disperse funds to every state. And so if you can find the organization that is representative of your state, then you'll be able to find grants and funding and have another resource to tap into. And the way that funding is dispersed does change. Um, for example, the past couple of years, we've had a lot more of a focus on the COVID funds and, and um, wanting to provide grants and funding for things as a result of COVID to help go against the, the issues that we've seen because of COVID, like um, people losing their jobs and that sort of thing. So grants have been shifting a little bit in that direction, but now they're shifting away to other things. So um, making sure that you're just kind of continually returning and looking to see what's funded year after year. Grantwatch.com is a, a good list to look to as well as grant alerts. Um, the 100, if you Google the 100 largest companies in your state, you're going to get a list. So this is a little bit more localized than the Fortune 500, but the 100 largest companies in your state, 
there might be a huge company nearby where you live that you didn't even know existed. And I, I did that. I learned a couple company names in my state that I didn't even know were a thing, but they were some of the largest companies in my state. And so that's another area where you could potentially tap into funding. Um, and New Music USA offers some great stuff that you could potentially uh, get within your classroom as well or for yourself. And so as you are locating these funding sources, I, I, I try to push a little bit of organization and I'm not always the most organized person, but you know, you have those wish lists and the priorities. Um, as you're locating these funding sources, make sure that you are saving some of these things. I highly suggest that you um, create a spreadsheet where you're saving the hyperlinks that are direct to these different funding sources. That way you're not wasting a lot of time Googling and searching later on. You can just click on that hyperlink and go. Um, you could keep a list of grant names like I have right here, the, the organization where it comes from, what type, if it's that bread and butter, that really good rolling grant that's constantly open. Um, and then when those things are due, the amount, all of that stuff is very, very helpful to keep track of. Um, find the right grants for you. Remember the ones that might not be right at that time, or maybe they'll never be right for you, but they might be right for the science teacher up the hallway. So share that one out, and it's possible that they might share one back with you later on that they might hear about. And of course, as you're looking for these things, try different synonyms for things. Funding, money, grant, proposal for grant, all of that sort of thing, because it will shift the results and you might unearth something else in that way too. And so that's a broad overview <laughs> of uh, trying to find this funding in different ways that you can um, find it. But I might, uh, please shoot me an email if you have questions or if I can help further. And that's it for me handing over the torch. Thank you, Ashley. Um, I just have to take an opportunity to say too, if you have not looked into the ESSER funding, which is the elementary and secondary educational relief uh, funding that came out um, with COVID, there's been three rounds. There are still like millions of unclaimed dollars. Um, and that is another great opportunity to get if, if you can claim it and apply for it, it is a large amount of money for your classroom. Um, so just wanted to tack that on. Um, I'm going to have uh, Kathleen include all that uh, ESSER information in the, the follow-up email that you'll receive. And now I'm going to turn it over to Randy, who is going to talk to us about how West Music can help. And I always like to say, you know, when it comes to your classroom, you, the teacher, are the expert. You know what's best for your students. And here at West, we are here to listen and to help you make the best decision for your situation. So, Randy, it's all you. Well, thank you. And Ashley, that was amazing. Everyone needs all of this information because people ask a lot about grants and stuff. And we have links to send them and such. And, and I know a few teachers that are really really good at it but that was amazing thank you thank you um i'll i'll speak a little to the interaction that uh, that you might have with uh, the vendors um there should be three questions that when if you call in and talk to a consultant <clears throat> there should be three questions that they ask you they should ask you what method or approach are you using um what do you have in your classroom and then they're going to ask you, well, what's your budget? So we'll start with the first one. Let them know if it's if you're using the ORF approach or a Kodai method, or if you're using a hybrid of ORF and world music drumming, and give them a good picture and be prepared to speak to that uh, with them. That That's going to help them, especially if you're calling for advice. Um, a lot of young teachers call for advice. I don't know what, I don't know what to do, you know? And that's they've got enough to think about you know they're trying to get their classrooms up and running and so you need to be prepared to talk about what you're going to be doing the approach or the method that you're going to be using um another tip would be to and and this is painful sometimes 
if your district hasn't already sent you a spreadsheet to inventory your classroom, do it yourself. Um, you need to know what's in there before you make that phone call. They're going to ask you, well, okay, we know what you're trying to do, but what do you have in, in your classroom right now? If you're going to be asking for suggestions on how to um, make additions to your instrumentarium, you need to know what's in your classroom, and it's easy to forget, and it, it's also easy for things to get stuck in a closet or a cabinet somewhere, and you don't think about it. Inventory all of that, and it's going to take a little bit of time, but do it because you're going to need it. And then you can always provide that to the district, and if, if every teacher did it, whenever bond money comes through, if uh, the powers that be are able to look at spreadsheets from all of their, let's say it's 53 elementary schools, they have an idea of what needs to be done to create equity across the classrooms in the district. So it's it's good for them. I encourage districts to send out, and I, I'll even provide a spreadsheet um, to all the teachers so they can tell you what's in their, their, in their classroom. It makes planning a lot better. Now, th these vendors are going to ask you, well, how much money do you have? Well, you don't have to tell them what your budget is. Tell them, tell them what you're thinking about spending right now. Because if you tell them, well, I've got $5,000, they're going to try to sell you $5,000 worth of stuff. And that's that's just the nature of people that work in sales. My title right now is not a national sales consultant. My title is an education consultant, period. I can't come teach your classes, but over all of these years, I've learned to listen to teachers, get the information that we need so we can together formulate a plan to start getting the things that we need to teach. Um, I can't I can't stress the importance of inventory enough um, and be prepared to answer questions about how you do what you do and what you have in the classroom. Um, Man, Ashley, you covered so much. Uh, it's you, you kind of stole my thunder, but um, l let's just talk about brands and quality and such. Um, there are a lot of different brands of uh, barred instruments out there, and drums, and this and that, and the other thing. If you've got X amount of dollars, and you think, well, if I buy these cheaper drums, then I can get more, and what you're going to get then are cheaper drums and they're not going to last as long. Um, barred instruments, I can't stress this enough too. Uh, there is a Montessori school in my, the district where I focus, I, I'm all over Dallas and Fort Worth, but there's one Fort Worth ISD. I was in a meeting with them today. There's a Montessori school that has sonar barred instruments that are 30 years old. And the teacher that was there forever took care of them. She cleaned the bars. She cleaned out the boxes at the end of the school year, uh, prepping for summer. If you don't clean the inside of your barred instruments or the, the resonator boxes, they're not meant to be full of dust and, and pencil erasers and, and such. That's not, that's not the way they were constructed. They're not going to sound the same. And you're going to hear rattling and this and that and the other thing where well, you got to determine if it's something floating around in the box or if it's a if it's a seam, and we'll, we'll touch on that. I won't spend too much of your time doing it. We'll touch a bit on the maintenance and repair. But buying a high quality uh, instrument is always beneficial. The next budget year, you get some more. The next year, you get some more. And you build up your instrumentarium with quality stuff. And it's going to last longer. And whenever you retire, you'll be able to pass it down to the next new teacher, and they'll have good stuff. Um, Maintenance and repair. And in this meeting today, how much time do I have, Jessica? Five minutes. As much, as much time as you need. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we're we're looking at all of the Fort Worth ISD schools, trying to do the equity thing across um, all 83 elementary schools. And so the the new uh, education lead is visiting the school and then she'll walk into the classrooms and there'll be barred instruments in there and the teacher will say, well, these don't work anymore. They don't work because because they've got missing bars. If it's a, a Studio 49 or a Sonar, you can call West Music 
and ask to speak to me or shoot me an email, I'm sure that my email address is going to be included. I'm going to ask you to send me some pictures and I'm going to let you know if that thing needs to go in the dumpster or if for a couple of hundred dollars, we can, we can make that thing like new. And as, as, as long as it's not one of those, the off brands, there's nothing wrong with the off brands. There's a lot of quality stuff out there. West Music can help you with that. We can also help you find the source to get the replacement parts that you need for your Lions, your Suzuki, your other other brands like that. But keep them clean, um, you know, buy high quality stuff, call and talk to somebody. And regardless of the vendor that you talk to, you call and say, I need to get a quote and this is what I'm doing. This is what I have. And I'd like to get a discount. Don't, don't ever shy away from asking for a discount. If one of us can't give it to you, we'll let you know. But if we see some room in there and we see some opportunity in there, um, we're going to help you stretch your budget as far as we can. That's really all I have. Anything else, Jessica? Uh, I, I thank you, Randy. That's some great information. I just want to uh, reiterate that um, all of our, our consultants at West are really here to to support you and help you do the do your job in your classroom. Um, many of us are former teachers and have or if we're not, we've been involved in the music industry for a long time. So we're all very passionate about getting quality instruments to kids. Um, and, and so we're going to do everything we can to work within your budget to get you what you need to make sure. Um, to get you the best um, instruments for your classroom. Um, we are here to help. Whether you're a brand new teacher and you're starting from scratch or you've been teaching for a long time and are looking for something new. And uh, Ashley, you've got your hand raised. Go ahead and jump on in there. Please yeah, do. I just, I just wanted to add that's um, so something that I totally love about working with West Music is um, when I've been writing grants and I've needed to present a budget for the grant, I try my best to include a quote because then they can actually see, you know, more about where the, where it's coming from. And multiple times I've um, gotten a grant for like a thousand dollars and I've asked my consultant at West Music, hey, you know, right now I can see that we're at a thousand dollars or a thousand fifteen. Can you can you just like even that out to a thousand? And they very much will work with adjusting just, you know, when you're that close to that number, they understand um, with grants, especially they have to be that that one number. And, and so they're they're great to work with if you can ask um, for just that little bit of an adjustment. Absolutely. And now we are to my favorite part, which is the Q&A. So feel free to either raise your hand or unmute or um, ask a question in the chat, either um, Ashley, me, Randy, or, or to the whole panel of people. What questions can we answer for you? Ashley, I have a question for you which involves the language of grant writing. You've identified so many incredible aspects that I had never considered, like sourcing your team and sourcing the kids and sourcing your grandma, like whoever you can talk to about this, the social network I had not ever considered, but the language of writing and grants and, and those types of things, is that stuff that you address in your book or do you have like a, are there, are there templates available online for how to write in grant application ease? I mean, it, yes, I, I do address it in the book. Essentially, if you think back to college, to your English 101 or 201 classes where you have that somewhat more formal writing, but it doesn't need to be super complex. You don't need to APA style it or whatever, like that sort of thing. Um, but as long as you're writing with a little bit of a more formal sense, that's really what they want to see. Um, when it comes to numbers, if you're using the number two, for example, you're not actually going to type out two, you're going to type out the word two. Um, so that's the sort of thing, just basic stuff that you know in the back of your mind and you might need to knock some cobwebs off here and there. But um, yeah, and there are, there, are, there are helpful hints out there as well when it comes to um, writing grants if you 
do a Google search for what's the best way to write a grant. It's, it's a little bit more of that formalized writing structure. I do have to say though, if you are looking to invest in Ashley's book, it is so user-friendly with so many good examples. Um, before I was in the position I'm in now, I was um, the books and music consultants at West. And so I've, I've read the whole thing and it is great for beginners who are just getting into grant writing. So just want to give you a little bit of props, Ashley. Thank you so much. You're so yeah. kind. Thank you. What other questions um, do we have in the audience? I feel awful. I, I got here a little late. I had trouble logging in and I um, I wonder if you could maybe share the book title again in the chat or or um, or I don't know if you're sending like a recap in the email of this because I know this is being recorded, but I, I apologize. I I missed the first bit. That's OK. Oh, thank you. Um, we, I think I just put the link in the chat. Maybe I didn't, but Kelly just held it up too. It's called the music educators guide to grant writing. Great. Thank and you. we will send a recap with all the links and everything. So you can watch the beginning of the session, um, Thank and you. find the book and everything else. Great to see you back again tonight, Charis. Thank you. Thank you. Ashley, I'm wondering, as you're going into a brand new school year, what's on your wish list for the upcoming year? Oh, my gosh. A larger room. Can I get that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can you apply for that with grant money? <laughs> well, you can uh, petition the community for a bond. <laughs> but <laughs> um, no, actually, we did just get some of the new the Sonar Smart Series. My <gasps> CTO raised some money, and so we were able to get some. Um, and so I've, I've got those, but I need some new mallets. So that's, that's number one on my priority wish list right now. <laughs> Love it. Yep. Are there more questions? Again, I feel awful that I, that I, I don't have full context, but, um, I am the, probably exactly the person that needs to have get this message because I'm starting classroom with just a blank slate and I'm at a new school um, and I have I saw a wonderful workshop two days ago that you offered music constructed offered where a gal gave an example of her classroom everything was rainbow and organized so nicely and laid out and I know there's so many materials out there and I I sent my principal a wish list just of of a few, you know, key things to get started. But there's so many things really that are truly on my wish list. Um, and so it's exciting to know the whole grant idea of, you know, finding other ways to, to gather more instruments um, specifically to get in the students' hands. So um, let's see. I don't know. I guess I, I don't have a question. I just, uh, I don't, I don't really know where to start. It, it's a little mind boggling and class starts like next week. So I know I can't get it all, you know, right away, but um, it is a fresh start in a new school. So I, I'd like to really kind of be very thoughtful about it um, and not just sort of grabbing whatever I can find, which is what I've done in the past. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway. I'll look at West more, check it out. Well, and, and we're happy to help you too. Um, you won't need much next week, but in a few weeks, maybe that's true. Um, starting simple is always great. What are some, some big group folk dances or movement activities that you don't even need any materials? You just need some music. Um, ooh, mm -hmm. body percussion, rhythm sticks, scarves. Look at, you're getting all kinds mm -hmm. of awesome ideas in the chat. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> that's great. Thank you. Yeah. But you know, you're welcome to contact us um, either by email and, and, and ask that question. You know, you've got this great hive mind here, but uh, anyone, either Randy, who obviously had amazing ideas and, uh, or whether it's an education consultant or whether it's music constructed, we can help you feel confident about starting with classroom management, uh, setting your routine and all the rainbow stuff 
while it's beautiful and it's gorgeous on Instagram and it's great to strive towards, the most important thing is the relationship between you and your students. Yes, definitely. Yes, thank you. And that seems to be maybe a nice segue oh, to <laughs> our <laughs> That's a good segue to our final uh, thing here is um, as a thank you for attending this seminar, we would like um, if if you would like to have a one on one chat with one of our West music consultants about your upcoming school needs. Um, we would be happy to help you schedule that so there is a link here it's bitly slash do re me we will also include this in the email. Um, it's just going to take you to a basic little form to fill out your contact info and what you're looking for, and we will get you connected with a uh, West music consultant that can help you assess your needs, uh, plan for what you want to do this year and in upcoming years, um, and get you what you need to do your amazing job in your classroom. So it's bit.ly slash do re me and we'll put this in the chat and in the email as well. Um, unless there are any other questions, it seems like maybe we're ready to wrap up for the day. Yeah, and so, I just I want to say thank you so much uh, to all of our presenters for taking their their time out to be here tonight to support all of you. Um, it's it sounds like a, a West Music Love Fest here for supporting each other in all the roles that we do. But we're we're all very proud to either work directly for or to be affiliated with with West Music, um, which is a company that just believes so much in being there at every step of your journey and every way that we can. Um, it's not just about here buy this book or here get this puppet. It's about all of this stuff that comes behind the scenes. Uh, and I'm so proud to have been able to be here tonight with you and with my colleagues to hear the expert information that has been shared with you. So please use this as a resource. Don't ever be afraid to email us a question, no matter how big or small, how do I start or what do I do next? Um, we're always happy to meet you where you are and to get you what you need or at least send you in the right direction. So a huge thank you to Randy, to Ashley and to Jessica and to all of you for joining us tonight. We look forward to seeing you at another Music Constructed PD and watch your emails for a complete resource list tomorrow from tonight's session. Thank you so much. <laughs>